Let's set up all the details now because the leadership of the Ghana Union of Traders Association, Guta, has called off its strike and directed its members to reopen their shops after an intervention by President Akufado and the Gaman chair. Now, members of Guta on Wednesday closed their shops in the Accra Central Business District over the worsening economic conditions in the country. President of Guta, Dr. Joseph Obing, is urging the traders to price their goods to respond to the economic indicators. Fellow traders, yesterday we had the opportunity to meet with the overlord of Gunstead, the government chair himself, and he has promised to take our concerns and grievances to the authorities. Thereafter, we had the opportunity also to meet with the president. He has also given all the assurances that he share our concerns and that the plight that we are in, he is even much aware of it and that they are doing everything that they should do to stabilize the economy. He says he's even worried that we have even closed our, so, uh, our shops to aggravate the situation. The dollar has not stabilized, it's still going up, and it's scary, even as I'm speaking, it's very scary. Let's go and open our shops so that we can um, trade, sell our goods, and take care of our children. Please, whilst doing this, be mindful that you have to benchmark your pricing with the flying dollar. Otherwise, you lose off your capital. You have to benchmark, you take your time, and look at the rate it is going in and always revise your prices according to the rate of change. Otherwise, you are going to lose all your capital. It is scary, please. Don't just trade. Be wise. Well, barely 12 hours after reopening their shops, some members of the association have already increased their prices of their products as advised by the president. My colleague Samuel Kojobres visited the Abosokai Spare Parts Dealers Market and results of a 50 to 80 CDs upwards price adjustment. I'm here in Abosokai to look at how the situation is. And I tell you what, as you can see right behind me, now from where I'm standing, if I'm not trying to exaggerate, I can see about 500 meters away from here. And it is filled with people, with shops opened and brisk trading activities are under here in Abu Seokai. It tells you that the members of Guta have really listened to the leadership and have resumed the activities. People tell me that they want government to act and act fast. Uh, well, really the government has betrayed us several times. We've tried to solve this matter amicably, but it seems as if he will assure, he will assure this, but later he cannot fulfill his promise. Yes, so that is the reason why we decided even to close the shops up till now. Well, Guta did now inform us that they've finished, they've almost completed, uh, they finished their prob uh, solving their problem, so we should come and open our shops. Yeah. Um, uh, what, what about the pricing of the goods? Has it changed since you opened this morning? No, the price is the same, because the government has assured us that uh, he will try his best to solve the problem, and that the dollar, the uh, depreciation of the city will, will, will never happen again. So really, we are optimistic that what the government has said now, he will uh, uh, listen to our, 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 our pleadings. Okay, actually, uh, our, uh, our uh, leaders, uh, yesterday on news, I heard that they've sat down with the president and they've discussed one or two things with the president, giving them, I mean, news of encouragement. So we should reopen. That's why today we've opened. So it's basically from orders from our leaders made us open. 
One thing we also picked is the fact that you should be increasing the, the price of your goods and services. But I've spoken to a lot of people, you're good really, because you, you trade, you, you, you're only traders. I've spoken to people who say we have not. What about you? Have you increased your, your prices? Uh, we, we, we've increased for, uh, for us, we've increased because this, this, is what is, this is the reality on the ground. Okay, now a dollar is almost 15 cities, right? So if maybe I bought something, let's say a month ago, which the dollar was around 11 cities or 10 cities, today if I'm going to buy the same thing, I won't get it at the same price. Or even at the same price, the quantity will reduce. So therefore, we have to adjust the uh, pricing system so that when we are going back to buy again, we can buy the same quantity. Yeah. So in practicality, Wednesday when you didn't open and today, how much have you added on to one of your goods? Oh, actually not that much. Maybe some 50 CDs, some 70 CDs. Yeah, the one that is a little bit... Because uh, yesterday, for instance, uh, that was uh, Thursday. I called one of uh, our retailers that we get, the wholesalers that we get, and a tank. Okay, Nizan Rogi. Nizan used to sell us at 650 cities. That was on Monday. Yesterday I called him. He said it's 750. He's selling at 750 now. So that means just from Monday to Thursday, he has increased it 100 cities. So definitely when I have some right now. I can't sell it at maybe 750. Well, if I go back, I might not get it at 750. Interactions that I've had from Accra Central to Abosel Kain, one thing cut across the government needs to act and act fast to salvage the Ghanaian trader. Else, there will be dire consequences. Will government act? There have been assurances that government will. But only time will tell the impact of these actions by government. The first vice chairman of Guta, Charles Boating, has been explaining reasons for the new price adjustments. Yes, uh, if we look at the trend of the city depreciation, uh, I think uh, nobody uh, or you don't need someone to tell you that uh, you also have to take a look at your prices because as I'm talking to you now, the city has hit, the dollar has hit the 15 cities mark, but the 15 cities to a dollar, which means at every point in term, there is uh, an additional cost in terms of the uh, city depreciation. So you cannot, you know, continue to uh, be selling your goods as uh, it used to be. Definitely, you also have to adjust your prices to at least make up for uh, the loss that you will incur. And no businessman is a father Christmas. Uh, even though uh, we've been thinking of the plight of the customer or the consumer, because to what extent <clears throat> you can continue to be increasing prices. But you also, you know, I cannot sit down uh, for, 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 the, uh, for you alone to bear the cost because you have a facility that you have to, you have to service at the prevailing interest rates. And that is the more reason why in our grievances, the policy rate was one issue that we raised. So once the city continues to fall, definitely you also have to adjust your prices to be able to stay in business. Let's do other stories now because government is setting back at teacher unions over, over their opposition to the appointment of a new Director General of the Ghana Education Service. The appointment of Dr. Eric Nkansa as the new boss of the Ghana Education Service has been met with fierce resistance from stakeholders in the education sector following the dismissal of Professor Opoku Amankwa. Now on Thursday, the teacher unions announced their opposition to the appointment and asked the President to rescind his decision. The development that annoyed and surprised all of us that a new director general has been appointed to the Ghana Education Service. 
The authority to appoint Director General is the president of the land. Unfortunately, contrary to what the teacher unions indicated, that we want a Director General who is a professional teacher, who has passed through the mill, who can bring his knowledge, skills, and influence to bear on the activities of teachers and non-teachers in the Ghana Education Service. Contrary to that, the gentleman who was appointed yesterday is not a teacher. He is a banking officer who was a special assistant in the office of the minister and has been appointed as the Director General of the Ghana Education Service. We are not happy with this development. It is as if we don't have professionals and well-educated people who have gone through the meal in education in this country to run education. It is as if we are being told that we educationists in the Ghana Education Service are no good to manage education in this country. Well, the Ghana National Association of Private Schools have also weighed into the controversy, describing the appointment as contravening the law. We have a statement on uh, that. So let's take a look at the statement. Okay, the law is not subservient to the appointment of the new GES Director General. Now, the appointment of the Director General, who is the overall superintendent officer, should be done tactfully to bring harmony, uh, innovation, and progress into the service. The Director General of GES should be a respectable leader in education from whom the rank and file of the service could take inspiration and motivation. On Monday, 17th October 2022, the President of the Republic of Ghana, through the Ministry of Education, terminated the appointment of Professor Opoku Amankwa as the Director General of GES. This termination brought to bear the urgency to find a replacement. It was the expectation of the education fraternity that an astute educationist with a good track record of experience, leadership and innovation will be scouted for within the corridors of education to take over the vacant position. Those are some extracts from the statement. But let's go via Zoom where Enoch Kwesigota is the Executive Director of the Ghana National Council of Private Schools and joins us live. Good morning, sir, and thank you so much for your time. Good afternoon, sir, and thank you so much for your time. All right, if you can just unmute for me so that I can hear you. Yeah, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for your time. Now, let's talk about what you make of all of this. Great. Um, let me use this opportunity to greet your church viewers this afternoon. What we are discussing is very simple. Um, you know that the government of Ghana is, and for that matter, the president of the Ghana is responsible to appoint a director general. And that kind of, um, uh, let's say, right has been enshrined at the pre-tertiary act. But the interesting thing is, is that the act did not come out with qualification as to how the, let's say, the director should be appointed in terms of qualification-wise. But when you run the education leadership or, let's say, educational regulatory um, policies in the country, you will find out that there is another act known as Education Regulatory Bodies Act, mm -hmm. which was passed in 2020 at 1023. And then at 1023, actually, Section um, 67 1 gives us the clarity and the qualification as to who is supposed to work in the educational space. Mm -hmm. And for the sake of the clarity, let me quote it. Section 67 1. Code A says that a person shall not practice as a teacher unless the person is registered as a teacher in accordance with this act. Mm. You, you understand? Yeah. And somebody who is supposed to spearhead the, the implementation of education at a pre tertiary level should not escape this kind of, let's say, qualification. Okay. It, it should be somebody who has taught at the 
pretentiary level who has been licensed and who has gone through the rank and file as a director general, and then that person can over to pretend as the director. When you even reach section seven, it goes on to say that a person who shall uh, a person shall not be knowingly or unknowingly be employed as a teacher in any institution mm -hmm. unless such a person is registered. And the B goes on to say that if you go ahead to do that, you contravince the law. Mm. So there is a prescribed format for anybody who will want to be the Director General of Ghana Education Service supposed to certify these conditions. Yeah. And in my thinking, it doesn't seem that so long as the law is open to appoint anybody, mm -hmm. a banker, a banker who holds, let's say, a PhD in banking sector, mm -hmm. don't have any locals to serve in, uh, in uh, to serve as. A All right. It seems like we're having uh, some capacity of director general okay. because it 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 violates the teacher professional knowledge of the professional practice, the communities of practice professional development, he doesn't understand the technologies in our educational sector. Mm -hmm. And it will make it very difficult for him to overrule or supersede or let's say control mm -hmm. the teachers that have gone through the mills as a professional teacher. Yeah. And it is, it, is, it, is, it is very difficult to ascertain the fact that he has, um, he's a banker, he's a professor. You know, the fact is that there's a difference between academia and education. When we talk of academic person, academic faculties are different from what we call educationists. When you talk of education, you have to be somebody who have the pedagogical understanding, the content aspect. And that is why teachers are being forced mm -hmm. to write licentiate events. So the question is that, now we are head of the implementation body for the Ghana Education Service. Mm -hmm. Can he instruct and enforce teacher professionalism in our schools? Now, Mr. Getwa, I mean, Dr. Nkansa has been appointed, yeah? Um, what does this mean for the association? What's the way forward? You see, the Constitution of Ghana makes it very clear that anything that... is in contravention of the law, exercise of the powers of the press, in accordance with the stated and the, the spirit of the laws in our country. Mm -hmm. And for that matter, he has to resent his decision. This is not... All right. It seems like we have lost uh, Inokwesi uh, Getua, who is the executive director of the Ghana National Council of Private Schools. But the education ministry has hit back at the teacher union, saying they cannot decide for the president who he should appoint. You have Dr. Aaron Kaza, who has taught for some appreciable number of years, have taught at the at the senior high school level, have also taught at at, at the university for at least eight years, a certified banker, an administrator, somebody who was just the immediate director of in charge of tertiary at the Ministry of Education. I mean, if the unions want to tell us that such a person does not qualify to run the affairs of the Ghana Education Service, especially at the time where, I mean, we need a strategic finance person to really manage issues of cash flow at the pre-tertiary space, I, 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 I find it very problematic that the unions will have such poetry. We we reject their rejection and 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 calls them to to at least demonstrate some level of respect to the number one uh, uh, gentleman of the land. And and we want to let the unions know that it is not within their prerogative. Neither it is within their power to determine who the presidents appoint to head the Ghana Education Service. 
Away from that, some members of the National Democratic Congress in the Swami constituency of Ashanti region have vandalized the party office over alleged ghost names in the constituency album. Their aggrieved members claim their names have been expunged from the album and replaced with unknown faces. There's more in the following reports. Siraj Mohammed is among NDC members at Swami who have their names missing in the constituency album. Names of members in about 21 branches of the party are alleged to have been replaced, disenfranchising them from the constituency election slated for Saturday, October 22. They have petitioned regional executives, but their grievance has not been addressed. After the voting and the election, I did almost six branches. I work on their form, and all of them was passed to be branch executive. But when the uh, delegate list came, all the six branches have just vanished. And secondly, yesterday when we went to the regional office, they saw our form. The form they told us that it's vanished. It's vanished. It fly away by, by the form itself. But we saw it at the regional office, and we told them, this is our evidence, so you should replace it. They told us that they are waiting for order from above. Debris of the action is visible at the entrance of the party office. Party documents, including forms of some aspirants with their embossed pictures, have been thrown out. Suraj says the action is to send signals to both regional and national executives for immediate solution. We are telling the national, the regional, to come down. To come down to settle this issue. Other than that, the election day, we will go there by hook or crook. We will vote because we have, the, we have the right to vote. So this is just a warning and a caution to the national and regional to come down to settle this issue. Other victims from different branches of the party within the constituency poured their displeasure against party executives for failing to solve the challenge. When the forms came out, my opponent, my opponent, that guy, his, his name was appear on the phone. Okay. Meanwhile, no, the lesson hasn't come on. So I expect him that both us, both of us, our our name should be come on. Should come on the list. Yes, that's my opinion. If not that, they are blamed. Worse, there is no lesson. Me qualify say me 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 to aba because me jam dius. Ena 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 me yeye film yeye di akoto e pasi. A member of the election committee at Swami, Musa Mohammed, has confirmed receipt of a petition from victims from the 21 branches. According to him, party executives have taken steps to address the challenge, but the victims have not been patient. They brought their grievance to us. We took it to the regional secretariat. We try ironing it out, but due to mistrust, they got mention of one Mr. Emmanuel Dede. According to him, because I was previewed on that day, he said when they came here for the exercise, he deduced that there is a faction in this swami. So after the exercise, he decided to take the hard copy to his office. In case any eventuality, the hard copy will be bring in to, to show as an evidence. As an evidence. Reporting for Joy News, Obideshie Ofuri Amanfo. Former President John Dramani Mahama says it is shocking that years after journalist Ahmad Swale was killed, perpetrators of the crime have not been arrested. The journalist was killed in 2019 and no arrests have been made since then. Speaking during a courtesy call on him by newly elected executives of the Ghana Journalists Association, former President Mahama urged the GJA to fight until the killers of Ahmad Swale are arrested. My colleague Kweku Asanti joins me live via Zoom with more. Now, Kweku, the former president has also been speaking about the economy. Tell us more. So the former president says President Kufuado's government has completely mismanaged the economy. Indeed, he said that the IMF negotiation is currently opaque and has not been transparent. He has been taking aim at the government for what he says is the shambolic management of the economy. He's asking them to go a senti style and organize a forum to consolidate views from Ghanaians in terms of how exactly the economy can be brought back to life. 
He said that the president claims that his ministers have performed creditably. It's just false because he does not know by what measurement the president is seeking to clear his ministers and claiming that he performed very well. So he's not particularly happy about how the economy has been managed. Indeed, it was the GIG leadership that brought the matters of the economy to his attention, and he said that he was not excited about how things have gone so far. So that is the economy. But talking about Ahmed Swale, we know that in 2019, the journalist who worked with Anas, Arimiyao Anas, was killed by unknown assailants at Medina. Since then, no arrests have been made. The former president says it is surprising that all this is happening under President Kufuado, who has styled himself as someone that champions freedom of the press. And so he wants the Ghana Journalist Association to fight very much to ensure that the perpetrators are brought to book. All right, that's my colleague, Quick Wesson, giving us an update on what former President Mahama has been saying on the economy and also on Ahmed Swale, a journalist who was killed in 2019. Still on the economy, Private Health Facilities Association has described as worrying the decision by the Ghana National Chamber of Pharmacy to sell medicine on cash basis. Now, the chamber said the industry is on the verge of collapse as a result of the current economic challenges. It has therefore been forced to sell medicine to customers only when they have paid for it. The chamber comprising Pharmaceutical Manufacturing Association of Ghana and Pharmaceutical Importers and Wholesalers Association of Ghana say their business are on the verge of a collapse. Current inflation rate stands at 37.2%. And it will surprise you to know, as we speak, some medicines are up over 100% because the city has depreciated more than 100%. This obviously brings about increase in the cost of goods and services by the same quantum, which we are not happy at all about it. The cost of essential accessories and other inputs needed for financial operations therefore becomes affected. Interest rates. Interest rates on loans contracted from commercial bank as at end of last year was approximately 27% and currently stands at 35% on a compounding scale. This means charges on loans to finance operations have escalated. Additionally, loans from commercial banks attract an extra 5% penal rates on default. The chamber has therefore resolved to transact business on purely cash basis. Therefore call for an immediate action to save the industry. Decisions. No credit policy for all buyers in the industry. All transactions with immediate effect shall be on cash basis until the economy stabilizes. I want to repeat, no credit policy for all buyers in the industry. All transactions with immediate effect shall be on cash basis until the economy stabilizes. Recommendation, the NHIS and all private health insurance companies. You're still watching Joy News today. Up next is business. Hello, good afternoon. It's time for the business segment here on Joy News Today with me, Beverly Broom. Now, the Deputy Minister for Communication and Digitalization, Amapoma Boating, is calling for a public and private sector collaboration to develop cybersecurity. She spoke at the National Cybersecurity Challenge organized here in Accra. The challenge, which was under the theme Regulating Cybersecurity, a public-private sector collaborative approach had six schools participating in the pilot event. Delivering a speech at the event, Amapoma Boateng said the challenge is meant to inculcate responsible usage of the internet among young ones and called for a conscious effort to make cybersecurity popular among the public. The Cyber Security Act 2020 
Act 1038 provide for the protection of children online and child online predators stand to be imprisoned for up to 25 years. Success to this is collaboration. And ladies and gentlemen, collaboration is very essential in the development of cybersecurity among the populace, especially among children. We must be deliberate about working together in the interest of our children. Presbyterian Boys Senior High School won the challenge which had St. Monica's Girls SHS at the Saddle College Odar Senior High School, Infantiman Girls SHS, and the Northern School of Business participating. As we treated the models, it wasn't the end. We still had to sit back as a team and individually to complete what we were supposed to read. We were supposed to read wide, read broad, and which truly helped us. But in general, the preparation wasn't that easy. Because with success, you have to work hard, which I believe we have done by God's grace. Head of Child Online Protection, Ifwa Brown Ison, explained to Joy Business the criteria used in selecting the participating schools. We picked these schools because they have shown commitment to set up cyber security clubs, and some have actually existing cyber security clubs. The reason why we are targeting senior high schools is because most of these schools are engaged, heavily engaged in electronic devices and the use of internet. Deputy Country Representative of UNICEF Ghana, Freitra Maxe, reaffirmed his outfit support for government to ensure the safety of lives both online and offline. UNICEF also encourages the government to expedite action to ratify the optional protocol to the Convention on the Rights of the Child on the sale of children, child prostitution and child pornography. This we know is underway, but the sooner it's done, the sooner we can advance. I would like to reiterate again UNICEF's commitment to support the government along this journey to ensure the protection of children both within the online and offline environment as reflected in the forthcoming country program of collaboration beginning next year, 2023 to 2027. Well, Ghana is well positioned to export power to neighboring Burkina Faso following the construction of what officials of the Ghana Grid Company, Gridco, described as a game-changing 330 kilovolt transmission line in Kumasi. The completion of the kumasi Bolgatanga transmission line will see the export of 200 kV of power to Burkina Faso, the Ashanti and other beneficiary re regions are also assured of sustainable and reliable power supply. Ohim Interior has more. The 555-kilometer 330-kV Kumase Bogatanga transmission line was constructed in phases. This included the Kumase Kintampo, Kintampo Tamale and Tamale Bogatanga transmission lines executed by five contractors including Electro Essi of Spain. Implemented by Ghana's Grico and Burkinabis Sonabel, the project was co-financed by the French government and the World Bank, who disbursed 175 million US dollars facility and 5 million US dollar grant respectively. The project, which forms part of Grico's effort to reinforce the national interconnected transmission system, is under 180 million US dollar funding support from France and the World Bank. It means an increase in transmission capacity and contributes to reduction of transmission lines overloads. Board Chairman of Grico, Ambassador Cabral Blay Amiye, told a commissioning ceremony at Akumaso that Grico has for the past five years been undertaking key electricity transmission projects. He spoke highly of the Kumasi Bogatanga transmission line as a game changer. These projects, together with others in the energy sector, have made Ghana a feeder in the delivery of reliable energy in Africa. The project that we, launched, we commissioned today in particular is a game changer and a key component in ensuring sustainable and reliable power delivery in Ashanti and other regions in the Middle Belt and the North. More importantly, it has enabled Grico to export power 
to Burkina Faso. A representative of France Embassy, Rafael Malala, is happy at the prospects of the project, saying this is by far his country's largest investment in Ghana. This investment is the largest France has made in Ghana to date. It has been 10 years now since France, through our operator, Agence Française de Développement, French Development Agency, committed to enhancing and upgrading electricity transport within Ghana and from Ghana to Burkina Faso as well. Log on to myjoyonline.com for a slash business for more stories. My name is Beverly Broom. Up next is sports. Let's take our first story from the Jubilee House, where President Nana Kufuado has advised President of the Ghana Football Association, Ket Okriku, not to interfere in the technical affairs of the Black Stars as the senior national team prepares for the FIFA World Cup. According to him, Ghana will have one of the best participation in the Mundial if the GFA stay clear of the work of the Black Stars coaches. All of us know how much how football is important to us. We are, uh, we, there's nobody who lives in this country who doesn't understand the importance of football. Uh, we grew up with football deep in our hearts uh, and uh, fanatical about it. So we want to wish you the best of luck. That's it. And hope that the preparations that, that, you, that you have outlined here are um, good enough to give our players the best possible opportunity to perform well. I'm hoping that the technical team that you've chosen, I, mean, I was impressed by them, the way they handled the qualification. And I remember when you came here, my saying that I hope that in the end you would keep the team intact. And you did that. I think it's, it's the best possible basis on which to go. But having chosen the technical team, Mr. President, I would also implore you, leave them to do their work. The work being also to choose the players. I think that the people who run football clubs, they know uh, what it is that you require of a good coach. He takes the responsibility. Uh, if he doesn't, you know what to do with him. If he works out, it's... But what is always a problem is Minister saying this person should play. <laughs> president saying this. Uh, the president tells me I should tell you that uh, X player should play. No, we don't want any of that. We have confidence in the people you've chosen. I think we've got a very good team. Otoado, Chris Hilton, and uh, George Watting. Richard Kills. Uh, I think we've got a very good set of people to guide our players. We should leave to them and their professional judgment who are the best combinations for us. And the rest of us, we do our best to support them with everything that we can. The minister has been here to speak to me about the financial and other responsibilities that we have. We're going to do our best to make sure that the, uh, the, the players are put in the best possible position to go ahead to carry the flag in Ghana. Well, a member of the technical team had picked up a role as a pundit with being sports for the FIFA World Cup, but Intel, who have picked up, indicates that he's dropped that uh, interest and he will focus on just on the Black Stars in this year's FIFA World Cup. Now, let's talk about Accra House of Oak and their new head coach, Slavo Matic has been tasked by the leadership of the club to ensure that they qualify to participate in CAF interclub competitions. He has described that mandate as a difficult one. Africa is a big challenge and I coming in a very big club. We want to make a big success. We want to, to try to, to find the find a way to, uh, to play good football and uh, to have uh, opportunity to give chance to younger players. Also, we want to take the trophies. And uh, as I say, Africa is a big challenge. I come in a very big club. For me, from today, is uh, the, be the best club in the world. Uh, we must work hard. 
we must have teamwork, we must work smart, and um, we must respect each other. Uh, they know also in which club they represent. And um, uh, a big club, big expectations. From me, they, will, they can expect one professionalism, one uh, dedicated work, uh, discipline of my team, because uh, I like to say how, how big is one, one club uh, uh, you can see on the pitch, how looking the team. Uh, I believe in these guys, I believe in the, this team because they take game also. That's your sports for now, but we do have more sports stories on myjoyonline.com. We appreciate your company. Up next is World News. Time now for latest updates in the world of entertainment. My name is KMJ. Ghana GJ's awards are coming up shortly. Ahead of that, the CEO, Mekukwe, has been talking about respect for DJs here in the country, and he thinks that DJs have been given much respect now. So DJs are very much respected. In Ghana? Yes. Um, very much so, because I, I, I want to retreat. If that's not the case, I'm not sure we'll be here and the dust is here. I am here. You know, so it tells you that um, the story, I guess you, you're asking the question because of what it was about 10 years back. You know, I'm not sure there would have been um, a, a radio discussion around DJs. So it's been, it's been a great um, evolution, you know, and we have been um, at the forefront of a massive revolution when it comes to the DJ um, culture in Ghana. And we can tell that. The answer to your question is yes, DJs are respected. Uh, very much respected. Okay. Let me and in speaking about DJs, DJ Black has also added his voice to the fact that DJs are really getting so well, uh, you know, in the, their field of play because uh, some of them are really trying as much as possible to put themselves in a level where they would also be given much attention and getting some uh, good monies as well. Um, I would say it could be better. But it's been worth it. Um, uh, but you should realize that uh, the first thing that uh, a DJ wants to do first is to entertain people. Um, usually, you know, we get so lost in trying to entertain uh, people that sometimes we don't think about the money. But now the story has changed. And that'll be all for entertainment. My name is KMJ. Maps takes over. Thank you very much, KMJ, for the updates in the world of showbiz. And that is where we draw the curtains on Joy News today. For more news, you can log on to myjoyonline.com. But I am still with you because we are about to cover the second contest of the day of the National Science and Maths Quiz. And then produced by Primetime Limited and sponsored by the Ghana Education Service in partnership with APSA Ghana and also supported by Goyle Prudential Life Insurance and Etal Tigo. The broadcast of the National Science and Maths Quiz on Joy News is supported by Virtual InfoSec Africa, Virtual Security Africa, Vitamil, Cowbell, Lumni by Enterprise Life, Fatex Toilet Roll, Ace Medical Insurance, Azar Group, Kings Group Limited, Family Health Medical School, The Boston School, DBS, Koba, Nasco Electronic, Smart App, ZNZ and Lumitrust from Pharma Trust. You know how to join the conversation on Facebook and on Twitter. We are Joy News on TV. Follow the hashtag NSMQ quarterfinals, hashtag NSMQ on Joy for all the latest updates of the 2022 edition of the National Science and Maths Quiz.